All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is basically the design process. And what that incorporates is using a 3D modeling software in order to make your object or whatever it may be. Excuse me. And for your students, if they're in sixth grade, they're kind of moving into that fuzzy area where they can do one of two things. So they can either do Tinkercad, which is pretty easy, but you're dragging and dropping shapes. So I would drag and drop this kind of shape, a cylinder, and put it in there. And then I could either add negative or positive space to it to make it look different. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Tinkercad itself is. And that's made by Autodesk. And then we also have uh, a fully online, this is all cloud-based, so you can access both of these on a Chromebook if you needed to, but you will have to have a regular computer to get the files off of the Chromebook or off of the uh, cloud-based system. Um, we have Onshape. So we have Tinkercad and Onshape, and Onshape is going to be more of a traditional style of remodeling software, and it's where you actually make a sketch. So like if I were to sketch this flat on this plane like this, and then I could choose to pull it out and make that object taller. And so that's called extruding, and that's how most of that program works. Um, and there's a lot of those out there, but those are kind of the ones we recommend because they are free and they're pretty easy to sign up for. You just have to make an account and you should be good to go on those. Okay. That's gonna be pretty much the longest process for your students, um, just simply because there's a lot of stuff that they can design and they also have to think through the process of like, if you have a problem, we need to drum up brainstorm a solution, and then we have to come up with the prototypes of the object that we may want to make. And we're after going to go through a lot of iterations of that design or otherwise in order to make it work right. And then the prototyping comes when you're kind of printing it off and being able to actually fit it to whatever you wanted to fix. So that's going to take the longest process. We only need one thing out of it. So we need a file type out of it. And that's called a .stl. It can also be an OBJ, but STLs is usually what we work. And so that's going to be the one file type we want out of the CAD system. So, that's the first step. so the first step is just going to be that design. The second one is going to be slicing. And so what slicing means is if I had an object like this, I would take it and I would cut it into very tiny thin layers and it tells it basically get coordinates to follow on each of those layers. So that's what's going to happen with our printer. Our printer is actually going to move up in Z layers as it goes, and then it's going to copy whatever it was on the X and Y. And so as it goes through that process, it creates a three-dimensional object. And that's what our slicer does. It's, it transfers it to make it known to the printer. And so that's what we're gonna to touch on today. So do you have your little USB? Yeah, I think it's there. Give you a close-up. Well, I mean, there's one pin. It's already plugged up. There's a micro. Yeah, we want that micro SD card. Yep, and then you should have a little USB adapter. And that way we can plug it in the computer. Yeah, it might be laying around somewhere. Usually it's kept kind of with the toolkit. Okay. Oh. To see on the oh. side, it, you can put in. Oh. I see what he's wanting to do. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. We just have to plug that into the computer. So we're going to actually install a program here, and I'm going to share the screen with you the whole time so we can go over it together and we'll get through it pretty easy. Okay. Well, that's why I couldn't mm -hmm. dag them tight. <laughs> there was another one over here. <coughs> that's why. <laughs> it won't go. 
one moment for the day. <laughs> we may all have one of those here. <laughs> just, just, it's been a long first two weeks of school. <laughs> That's understandable. All right. So we're ready to go with the USB is plugged in. I'm going to share my screen here. And so it may have full screened on you and I want you to follow along on this. So if you hit the escape button, it should minimize it. Yes. Okay. So are we working on a Windows or a Mac? Mac. Okay. So Mac's just a little bit more finicky and that's about it. Um, just for this program in particular. So what you're going to do is we're going to go into our folders, right? And we're going to open up our SD card that we just plugged into the computer. And then we want to find the Cura folder within the SD card. There should be a .dmg inside of the SD card, and then you just go through the usual install process for a Mac. So you drag and drop it, and then it's going to ask you to drag and drop onto a new application folder. Yeah. Well, we can go through this and do it again. Oops. Or maybe it'll let us. No. It might. And so then once you get the next ones, it's going to ask you like next, next, and do you want to install these drivers and that kind of stuff. And you're going to go all the way through that until you get to this add new machine wizard that's on my screen. Okay. Um, our school computers have to have administrator access and we just try okay. to, and it's asking for administrator name <laughs> and password and we don't have that. Um, <laughs> so... Okay. That is the only problem we're encountering right now. We do not have an administrator access to install. Okay, um, so we don't have a login that can be used. We can put it on the, the, the other. The yeah. Yeah, you can. You can put it on. You can put it on anything. It doesn't matter. It's just there's a lot of information in this, and I would rather you guys do it with me. Yeah, but go along. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it, you're going to get lost, and then it's going to be hard, and you know back and forth in order to kind of fix it, but it, it's easiest if we follow along. Boxes, they're so damn hard to open. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to eject this from my computer. Sure. So have you guys pretty printed anything yet? Um, we've tested a couple of different things. We did the keychain. Yeah. Well, today we're going to look at kind of like the process behind that because you have the test prints on the little SD card that you had inside of it. You can pretty much just say, hey, print these. Um, but we're going to look at how we get there. Oh, this is the same as that. Oh, um, it doesn't help me. Um, <laughs> this isn't working. Um, Sorry. <laughs> you're fine. Okay. We we can still go through it even if um you guys can't install it. It'll we just had installation set up um Tuesday and Wednesday, and so we're still trying to get all our classroom stuff set up. Yeah, because there's there's so much stuff in the East classroom that it's crazy. Yeah, we haven't even logged into this MacBook yet. This is the first time. <laughs> so we're gonna try it nope. today. You said a one I did. What in the world? It hates us. <laughs> Oh, East underscore W. Lowercase? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all lowercase. Dagnab it. Yay. Seriously. All right. Okay. And I'm happy they noticed that these were new and needed an adapter. <laughs> I'm smart you just grabbed the adapter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's because I have this MacBook Pro at home, so I knew that I had to have it. <laughs> That's the only reason why. Yay, we can actually install things. How nice is that? <laughs> yeah, because that's all that is. is you can put a USB, an SD card or a micro. So. Nice. Yeah. 
<sighs> it's installing the software. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, just when you, whenever you get to this add new machine wizard, uh, we'll go ahead and continue on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, don't. As long as you guys got it, I'm more than happy. Sometimes we have to go through it without having anything to install on, so. Probably not. Even if it, we log into it with the hours, we'd still have to have admin. Even if it's even on the server, probably not. If it was that other one, would have worked, I think. That's why it has a separate thing in there. Just a pain in the I would have realized we were going to encounter these issues. I would have already set this up this morning. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. I just hate feeling unprepared, and I'm sitting here completely unprepared. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say you're unprepared. You had the video webcam was ready and <laughs> joined the audio pretty fast. And no, it's it's been good so far. This is a minor hiccup. Yeah, once this goes, it'll be fine. And we're we're kind of a little bit better off because we do have a 3D printer in our makerspace. So we're not our kids are not completely well, our kids are now, but um, we have a little bit of experience with 3D printing, so um, hopefully the rest of this will go kind of fast. Yeah, I mean, all of this is just going to be lots and lots of information about a slicer. And so slicer is that in-between that we have to do before it goes to the printer. So it goes basically STL file from a 3D modeling, and then we're going to move to the slicer, and then it goes to the printer. And so that's kind of like the three steps that we have to go through before we can do it. Okay. So if your kids make an object, they're going to have to go through that as well. And we would like for them to teach for you to teach them the slicer. We want them to do all of this. Okay. You know, you get the knowledge in this case so that you can help them out if something goes awry, but we want them to really do it all. Um, you know, it's kind of their materials, their space that they can actually make stuff with, so. Is Cura the slicer? Yeah, Cura's the slicer, exactly. I wonder okay. if it's on these other computers already. It possibly could be. We're just wondering if East put it on Went ahead and installed it. I bet they did, I'm gonna go look. It's possible. Um, so it, it can be either Cura. There's a two six two and there's a fifteen six. Um, and so right now we're setting up the fifteen. But. It's on all of our computers, the other kids' computers. Do you know what version it is? Uh, I'm not sure. No. Okay, that's fine. Well, it's going to be very similar in either case. Uh, if it ends up being the newer version, um, it's pretty much the same thing. You just don't see the settings at first. Okay. They're really good. When they were in here mixing the music earlier, when they were going through, it was very impressive. Yeah, we can do it on that. You already have it open? Okay. That's fine, too. And so you're going to have to do these settings for each computer that hasn't had it set up yet. Um, so there's actually a file on the USB to immediately load all these settings if you wanted to. Um, so it would make it much quicker. But yeah, right here. yeah, it's probably easier for you to go through it with the students so they actually know what the settings do. Okay. I think all of these are set up for for Ultimakers. Okay, so what we're going to do is, if you might be able to turn the screen or otherwise so that you can kind of see myself and what I'm doing for yours. And let me just hit cancel here. And so is it this kind of screen that you have up? Oh, let me see. Well, yours is empty. Does it have like a blue box in it? 
or at least they're on the same kind of screen. Because if they are, then I know how to get back to the other spot, and then we can kind of move from there. I'm on the um, wizard on this Mac now. I'm at the wizard where it says select our machine. On the wizard? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, we can go ahead and do that then. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, oop, I shouldn't have exited out. Do. Let me get back real fast and then we'll go through it. So here it's actually made by Ultimaker, so that's why they're popping up. Um, so now I'm going to go to the adding machine. So we're ready from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to click next and then we're going to click on other. And then we're going to go to Mendel on the other machine information. That's about halfway down the list. E-N-D-E-L. And then we're going to click next and finish. Now we're going to build, it's going to pop us into our build yeah, space. I am there. Yeah. So our, this big blue area is trying to tell you, hey, this is where um, you would do everything, right? So this is the build space or build area that your printer has. And so we're going to change these settings on the left-hand side to kind of go over each piece. And there's a lot of information. If you have a question about it, just stop me, let me know, and we'll go over it. Sound good? Yeah, we have a little golden robot in the middle of ours. Is that okay? Yep. So the first time you load uh, Cura on any of the machines, it is going to pop up a little golden robot. And so you can actually print that guy off if you would like to. Um, I'll use a different model, but it's the same process with either one. Okay. Cool. Alrighty, so here at the top we have quality. It's going to say layer height. Layer height is your biggest determinant of quality. So at, we, we use anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 millimeters for our prints. And so 0 0.3 are going to make faster prints, but they're going to be low quality. 0 0.1 is going to take longer, but they're also going to look a lot nicer. And so we're going to leave that at 0 0.2 for this tutorial. Okay, so the next one we're going to have shell thickness, and shell thickness is the outside of your walls. So if you have a model, so say I have this model or this cup, and whatever the walls are on the outside, that's how thick this shell thickness is. So like, depending upon how, you know, wide it is here, it's going to at least be 0.8 or 1 millimeter wide. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this to 0 0.8. So we want this value to be a nozzle size or to be a multiple of our nozzle size. So that sounds a little bit weird, but we'll kind of cover it when we get down. Okay. Okay, so next, uh, make sure that neighbor retraction's clicked and it has a check mark in it because we need that. And then we're going to move to fill. So the bottom and top thickness is the same size as the shell thickness. It's going to be just is dead on the bottom and top. And so it's gonna determine how thick those are at a base. And so we're going to change that to 0 0.8 as well. Next, we're going to have fill density, and this determines almost how durable or how strong your prints are going to be. And so it basically creates a certain amount of plastic inside of the object that we're printing in order to make it strong. And it makes it either in like squares or something like that in order to kind of give it that rigid function of shapes inside. And so we're going to change that to 5%, and we can use anywhere from 5 to 25% for this value. Okay. You can use more than that, but once you kind of get more than that, it doesn't really help durability a whole lot, and it just, in the end, takes more time and more class. Um, if you're trying to make a part that you're going to be, you know, torquing or there's going to be a lot of tension on it, yes, you would probably turn that up higher to maybe like 75 or something, but mm -hmm. make sure that's like your final in product, so it prints off once and you don't have to print. So next we're gonna have speed and temperature. And so print speed is gonna be how fast that the printer is moving to make your object. And so we are going to leave that at 50 millimeters per second. If you choose to slow this down, it makes nicer quality prints and it'll look a little bit better. If you speed it up, it has the possibility to knock it off the build plate or make it look worse. Mm. So next we're gonna have printing temperature and for this, filament that we have, we're going to change it to 220 degrees Celsius. And so most PLA, which is the type of plastic we have, or it's also known as polylactic acid, 
Um, it's actually a biodegradable cornstarch, and so it doesn't have any fumes or anything like that, but this specific one has a composite in it that makes it a little bit harder to melt down, so we have to heat it up a little bit more. Next, we're gonna have our bed temperature, and the A5 printers do not have a heated bed, so we're gonna change that to zero. If we were using ABS, what should we set that temperature to? So ABS generally is going to be a little bit hotter than that, and it could be like 230, 240. Okay. And so we don't recommend using ABS in the classroom. That's because it actually produces a fume and you will be able to smell it. Okay. And so most EB ABS is printed in like an enclosed 3D printer. And okay. kind of what those are used for, yeah. Alrighty, next we're gonna have support type. And so support is actually whatever you don't have touching the build plate. So Say I try to print something in midair, right? And trying to print this in midair, it's going to create support structures below here in order to print it out. And so that's what a support structure is. It's going to be supporting anything that isn't touching the build plate or isn't supported by some other thing below it. It's gonna print a small little raft kind of deal for it and make it breakable. So you may see that on your little robot um, when we print. So we're gonna click everywhere for that, just for the sake of this. And for some students might make models that um, have you know, layers that are higher than others. And then if they don't rotate it to the right area, then it will need support. So we're gonna put everywhere. Next, we're gonna have platform and adhesion type. So what this helps with is warping. And what warping is, is if you have like a big flat object that you're trying to print off and it almost covers the build plate or it's kind of big and it covers most of it, what may happen is the edges of the plastic will shrink together as it cools and it'll pull the plastic up and I'll kind of make it, you know, bend in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one little piece they printed over there. Yeah. yeah, so this actually helps to prevent that. So we would recommend only using a brim at the very least and okay. use a raft. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of crap. crap. Whoop, plastic. So. That is something to keep in mind. We're gonna leave it on none for now because our little robot guy is not gonna need it. Okay. Next, we're gonna have our filament diameter and that's going to be 1.75. And so you can also see that on your filament, it should say PLA and 1.75 something. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then flow percentage. And so this is the amount of material extruded multiplied value. And so really everything should kind of be printed 100%. Hopefully it's optimal enough to be printed there. If you feel like it's under extruded or it looks like there's just not enough plastic in certain areas, you could increase that value. But usually I don't even mess with that value. Okay. So next up we're gonna have the nozzle size and this is specific for each printer. And so for the printers or the A5s, we have 0 0.4 nozzles. So we're gonna change that value to 0 0.4. And so notice now that the yellow value of our shell thickness should have went white and it should be happy. And so that was the only thing it was conflicting with and it's because it needs to be a multiple of it because whenever you print one shell thickness, it's going to be one pass of the nozzle and 0 0.8 would be two passes of the nozzle. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so that's all the settings for there. And so there are more advanced settings if you would like to do something like that, but we don't usually go over those. If you would like kind of more information on those, we're welcome to help you. So I only need to change uh, a few more things and that's for our specific printer. So what we're gonna do is come up to machine in the top and then we're gonna click on machine settings. It's gonna pull up a little dialog box. Um, okay, I'm overlooking everything, sorry. And what we're gonna change is the maximum width, depth and height. So our printer is a five by six by four inch build area. We need to change these a little bit. So the first maximum width will be 125 or right about five inches. The next one will be 150. And maximum height will be 100. Remember, we don't have a heated bed, so we're going to unclick that. And then make sure all these values over here on the right hand side are zero and auto, and then we should be good to go. And so what kind of other printer do you guys have? An Ultimaker. An Ultimaker? Um, do you, are you gonna use Cura also for that? I think so, I think the, mm -hmm. the other computers are set up for it. 
I think sounds good. Well, then what we're going to do is we need to change the machine name on this so that we know which one we're working with. And so yeah, it says Mendel, but it might be easier if we go ahead and type in just A5 or NWA 3D A5. And so it kind of gives you an idea of what the printer is and you can change between the two settings whenever you have them set up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and type in that name and hit okay. And then okay one more time. And then it kind of saves the settings over here. You'll see a flash and then it's ready to go. So if you did want to change to an Ultramaker or something, you can always click up on machine in the top right and I can select a different printer here, like the A31, and it's gonna change it for me. So that's how you would change printers. Awesome? Yep. Cool, so now all we have to do, since our Cura settings are correct, we need to load in a model. So we're gonna to have to take that STL model from the design process. So we design, and now we're going to slice it from the STL. So I'm gonna to go to file, and I'm going to go load model file. And then I'm gonna choose my little SD card, and I'm going to go to STL files inside of there. And this is just kind of, you know, to show you how to get there and what you're gonna use. And it will only detect STLs or OBJs. You won't find anything else really. And so you'll be looking for those specifically. So if your students haven't saved it in that, you'll know because you'll be like, hey, you can't find this file. I'm gonna load the dice and it's gonna pop up inside of here. And we, you can use the robot, you can edit the robot as, as much as you want. It's the same type of stuff. Yeah, we, we have the robot. We have the chain and the die, so <laughs> we cool. can do, do the robot. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on with the window screen here, where the blue box is. And so if you click on the object, it's going to pull up three things in the bottom. These three things, Three things in the bottom are going to be rotate, scale, and mirror. So rotate, it's going to pop up three axes for you to move the object around. Okay. It's gonna have a green, a yellow, and red one, and you can grab on these lines on the screen and you can move it as you want. <laughs> and so you can rotate the robot if you wanted to, and then you can click like lay flat. That's also a selection within this, and lay flat's going to put it onto the build plate. That's what it means by that. Okay. So like if I have my cube like this and it's kind of on its angle and I click lay flat, it's gonna lay it down, okay? okay. And we also have reset to reset it to what it originally loaded into the file as. Then we're going to have scale and scaling is going to be able to increase our object by proportions. And so if I type in two here, it's technically 200% or it's twice the size. And so you can have uniform scaling and you can have non-uniform scaling. You just have to click that little lock box down at the bottom and you can adjust it as you want. And so there's a reset button for this one also. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it changes it back to how I loaded it in. Okay. There's also a two max function, which means it'll blow up whatever the object is as big as it can on that printer. Make sure the kids don't click that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So yes, but you'll notice right now for the first one, we have 12 minutes to make it. And this one's going to be, I think, close to an hour. If I remember right. 10 hours and 27 yeah. minutes, all right. 10 hours and 30 minutes, right. So that's a bit ridiculous and we don't really need a cube that big. So we're gonna reset that. <laughs> and then finally, we're gonna have mirror and mirror basically flips it around an axis. So if I hit mirror Z, it's going to turn it completely upside down from what it was before. And the same thing for Y and X. And so that's kind of moving it around and flipping it quicker. So next we're going to talk a little bit about up here in the right hand corner and it's called view mode. And so the one thing I like a whole bunch about view mode is the layers function. And so the other ones are nice and it tells you a little bit more information about it or you can see through the object and kind of get what you want. But if you click on layers, you're gonna notice it turns kind of different colors and you're gonna have yellows, you're gonna have reds, and a little bit of green and blue. And so what this is actually showing you, remember that this thing is called a slicer. And so if you look to the side, like I have right here, it has all of these layers kind of sliced for this model. And so if I grab over here on this right-hand side and pull this down, you'll notice that I cut into the object. And so what these are is the layers of the object, and this is what the printer sees. This is what we tell the printer to do. So this is the process of slicing that it will go through. So we can go all the way down to one, and this is going to be the very first layer that prints off from our printer. And then if you go all the way up to eight, 
or 80 for my dice, that's going to be the last layer that's been over. And so that's kind of how that works. So I want to show you one thing. I want to show you the fill density and how that affects it. So if I change this value over here from 5% to say 25, what's the yellow infill that we saw here earlier? Oh, yeah. And now you see how much fuller it is? Mm -hmm. It's your form of infill and that's what it does. So you notice that this is obviously going to be more durable than if I had a 5%. And so that's the 5%. So just this yellow line right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cure in a nutshell. And I know it was quick and there's a lot of things. Uh, do you have any questions right now? No, that was really, no, that was, yeah, great. That was awesome. <laughs> cool. So all we have to do now is we have to save it, right? So we sliced it, we have our settings right. And now we just need to save to our SD card. So you can either choose file and save G code, which is what we want out of the slicer. And, or you can hit up here and click toolpath to SD. This one. So I went ahead and hit toolpath to SD and it's going to save it in whatever file you opened it from. Uh, you, I'm sorry? Ours is um, like a floppy disk and it says save toolpath. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Mine's just specifically an SD card because I actually have an SD card adapter plugged in. Gotcha. We do too. Uh, I think we do. I think it's just it, it just depends on what it detects, yeah. Okay. Non-specific thing. So once we put it on there, we can actually eject it if we hit it, hit toolpath to SD and mm -hmm. card for us. So now I have that ready. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen sharing because we're done with Cura. And I'm going to take our little SD card that we have, right? So I'm gonna take it out of the USB and we're going to transfer it to the printer. So that's step three. So the first one was design, second one's going to be slice, and the third one is transfer. So I'm gonna pick up my printer over here and directly beneath the button is where you're going to plug in the SD card. And so it should click in place and you should be able to kind of hear it or feel it. I got it. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to make my filament holder real fast because you guys kind of already have yours put together, so you're ahead of me. It's only because of Reuben. <laughs> <laughs> only reason. <laughs> only reason. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Okay, so you guys kind of have everything set up and ready to go, and so all we would have to do at this point in time is hit print on the printer. But since we're doing a tutorial, since we're kind of going over all this stuff, now we get to do all the troubleshooting. So there's actually going to be four steps in troubleshooting. And first troubleshooting step is actually going to be going through Cura and making sure everything is set up right, have the right settings, and you slice it correctly. And since we already did that, we know it's good. So the second one is going to be mechanical inspection. And so we're gonna check out our printer now um, because there may have been something wrong in shipping or maybe somebody decided today that they're going to mess with the 3D printer and they came by and they unplugged the motor and they're like, ha, 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 this is going to mess up their stuff. It's possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to check, make sure all the motors are plugged in. So we have four motors and three limit switches. The limit switches mean zero. So whenever the limit switch is clicked down, it's telling it, hey, you can't go any further this direction. So we're going to check those out real quick. So for the first ones, we're gonna have, let me change my camera there so I can better demonstrate. Yeah. The X motor, okay? And so this is gonna be on your big arm, right? So if you're looking at it from the front, your X motor's over here on the side where the belt kind of comes from. Excellent. Make sure that guy's plugged in. And then there's also a limit switch right inside here. So it's also gonna be labeled with a little X tag. Okay. And so that one should be plugged in as well. And then we're gonna check right back here, and this is the very back of the printer, and this is going to be E. And so this means extruder. And so that's what pushes plastic through. Okay. That one's plugged in, that's the one that doesn't have a limit switch. Next, we're gonna have a Z down here at the bottom, or at the bottom of the spiral base. Okay. 
and then we're going to have the limit switch. It's going to be right inside here. So you can see the top of it right here. And just make sure the plug is directly underneath. So it's going to be right here. It's kind of that yellow piece that's up next to the big column. Yes, I see it. Yeah, perfect. And then finally, we're going to have Y. And Y is in the very back. And they're right next to each other. Easy to see. There's a Y right over here, too. I see it. Oh, I know. Yep, and Y is just pretty much in the back next to Z. Okay. Sweet. Okay, so we kind of check motors, make sure the motors are plugged in, make sure we have everything ready to go there. Another thing we might want to check is if this wobbles. So does this move a whole bunch on yours? No. no. Cool, sounds good. Does this wobble on yours? This big carriage? No. Okay, and what about the belts? Do the belts feel tight? You know, not super tight, but they're at least... You know, bounce to it, yeah. Sweet, sounds good. Okay, so that means our mechanical inspection is good. And so we would basically be ready to print if we were done with troubleshooting, but we're not. <laughs> another step here. We have to do another type of mechanical thing, but this is actually something you may spend a very, like, a lot amount of time on. And so your kids are going to have to get used to this, and we recommend training your kids to do this because this process can be a little bit tedious, um, but it's leveling the build plate. Leveling the build plate, what that means is here we have a little nozzle, right? So you see this nozzle here? Yes. Hard to see. It's really tiny. And that's the piece that's from the build plate. And so what we want to do with that piece is we want to make it 200 microns from the build plate. So that's a really small value, and we actually get that by our piece of paper that I told you you need earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of paper, and we're going to fold it hamburger style. You can, you can fold a hot dog hamburger or whatever you want. Just as long as it's 200 microns. So paper is usually 100 microns thick, and so if we fold it in half, we get 200, and that's what we're going to work with. Okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug my printer in. And we're going to kind of go through a few of the menus here so you kind of see what's going on. So we're going to click on the button once, and it's going to pull up our main kind of status menu area. So we're going to be able to select different things here. We can either choose our print, we can choose setup, or we can choose controls. So controls is going to be something that you can kind of do whatever you want with the printer. So you can either heat up the nozzle by itself, or you can turn the fans on, or you can move it up and down or side to side. So controls kind of gives you the option to move it however you want. But we're gonna go into setup. So click it once and go into setup. And then we're going to click on something called auto home. And so what auto home means is it's gonna go to its origin point or zero, zero, zero. So that's gonna hit all of the limit switches down. That's what we just checked, and it's going to go 0x, 0y, and 0z. So z is going to take the longest because it takes a while for that motor to get all the way down. Okay, so next what we're going to do, we're going to go back into setup, and then we're going to go to disable motors. Because after you auto home, it locks the motor so you can't move anything. It says, hey, I'm, I'm in control, but we're going to say, no, you're not. <laughs> And now we can move everything as we want, right? And so this is kind of the process of leveling. So you're going to have to auto home it, make sure Z is at zero, because we want to make sure that nozzle's at the right spot. And then we get to move the build plate and kind of manipulate it until it's a flat surface to the nozzle. So what we're going to do next, this is a little bit hard to show you, and I do move my printer a lot in this. We would prefer to keep yours on a flat surface so you level yours correctly. Um, I'm going to Move mine around all over the place so that you can see what's going on. If we take a look here on the side, you'll notice that there's these little knobs. And they're kind of, they're above springs, right? You see the spring above it? So there's knobs with springs above them, and that's going to be leveling our build plate. Yep. Okay. And so also one thing you can do with the build plate is you can actually push down on this. And so that's the thing that we're going to do here in a second, because we have to get a piece of paper between the nozzle and the build plate. So if it's too close, we might have to push it down. So what we're going to do now is we have three of those little things that I showed you with springs. So we're going to have two on the outside, and then we're going to have one close to in the inside of the screen. Yes. 
And so that one's kind of hard to find. So what we want to do first is we're going to do that hard one first. So we're going to squish this backwards and we want to put the nozzle or the extruder directly above that adjustment. Okay. And then we're going to take our piece of paper and we're going to put it underneath our nozzle. And so it's kind of hard for me to get under there. So I'm going to push my build plate down and then have it underneath the nozzle. Okay. Okay. All right. So mine is much too tight. So you notice how this paper is crinkling? Yeah. Pull it in and out. It means it's too thick. It means it's not 200 microns separating it. So if I want it to go down, I have to go counterclockwise. If I want it to go up, I have to go clockwise. So I like to say clock up, count down. And so it's going to be clock up or count down. So if you're tightening or going right, it's going to move it down. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move my knob to the right and lower it. And then I'm also going to move my paper at the same time as I'm kind of adjusting that knob to get the feeling of, is it close enough? And so what we want is we don't want it to be completely loose. We want it to be, there's a little bit of a drag on the paper. But, you know, if you hold it with two fingers and you move that paper back and forth, it should be easy enough to slide in and out without buckling. And that's the resistance we're looking for. There needs to be. Yeah, so use two fingers and you're going to slide the paper in and out and if it has a small amount of tension and it still moves and it's happy, it should be good. And so this is just kind of a feeling process and you'll get used to it. Um, if you want an example of kind of how that should feel whenever you move it, I can give you one. Is that good, you think? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. It's like, it's not just slide, it's it, I can slide a little, but you, it's still, yeah. Yeah, so you, you kind of feel it dragging on it. feel it pulling a little bit. Right, exactly, exactly. But it still is easy enough but to You don't have to like shove it to make it better. <laughs> right. Okay, so next one we're going to do is we're going to pull it to the outside. So we want to pull this all the way to the outside and put it above that next adjustment. And then we're going to put the paper underneath. And mine is way too tight because it's crinkling like this and it's not happy. So I'm going to have to lower it by tightening to the right. So clock up, count down. That's too loose. Yeah, if you can't feel any resistance, it's definitely too loose. So this is something you'll get used to as you get more and more. And you can also actually watch the first layer as it goes down. Most okay. problems that are going to happen with a printer happen in the first couple layers. So like within the first two or three layers that you have going on to the build plate, you're going to know if it's going to mess up. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. And now we can move back to this one, which is a little bit in. And so one thing that we're doing is we're leveling a triangle. And so it makes it a little bit weirder to think about because it's not square, so we don't get to level each side individually. We actually have to level on the corners, right? So if this corner is low, this back corner towards the bump, then we have to adjust these two knobs. So that's something to keep in mind. So mine is definitely too tight on this too. I don't know what I was doing last time I was printing. <laughs> and okay, I'm happy with that also. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are great at this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to heat it up because you guys may have printed before and there may be plastic on our little nozzle here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button once. We're going to go to setup. And then there's two values here. There's going to be preheat PLA and preheat soft pull. And so now that we're leveling the build plate, I'm going to talk a little bit about filament issues. And that's pretty much what we're going to move on to next. The preheat PLA is to load filament in and also squeeze out old colors. The preheat soft pull is to help pull out clogs or pull out it from like a, if it's cooled off, if it's been off for a while and you still have filament in it, and kid is like, hey, I want a red, I don't want that blue. What you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to hit setup or tell them to hit setup for the preheat soft pull and wait for it to heat to 100 degrees and then you're going to pull out the filament. Okay. So that's what soft does. It helps to remove clogs and it helps to get the plastic out of the way. 
So we're going to choose preheat PLA because we want to load here in a minute. So I went ahead and hit preheat PLA. And now it's going to heat up. So we're going to hit auto home one more time. And that's just to make sure we didn't move the Z axis up and down during that process. Like our check. And then we're going to again level it. We're going to level it for the plastic that may have been on it. So what could have happened was we had a nozzle, right? And there could have been plastic from a previous print hanging right here. And so we leveled the plastic and the nozzle to the build area. What we want to do is only level the nozzle to the build area. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do here. So once it kind of heats up, so mine's already at like 130. Um, you should be able to kind of put the paper underneath when it's kind of that hot. But there, there might be something wrong with the printer. Why can't I move this? You did the auto set, so you have to go back in and override it so you can move it. Courtney, you're going to be the queen of 3D printing. <laughs> All right, exactly. So we need to disable the motors. So I'm sure that's a question you guys will have often. I want it move. Disable motors? No. I do that too. I say that to myself. Okay. So we're going to level it again. And so mine was a little bit too high that time. So that's telling me that I knocked a piece of plastic off and now I'm adjusting it for that. And so you're going to go through the same process of going over each little adjustment knob until you feel comfortable with it all over. So I'm going to do mine real quick. That one too. And, and then I'm going to check the rest of the build plate at this point in time. In the middle, and I'm going to check this back corner as well. And so everything seems happy on mine. And so I really didn't have to do much adjustment besides one of them. Cool. We get that. So do you guys already have filament loaded in? Yes. Okay, you do? So, well, for this process, we're just going to pull that out. So if you want to squeeze this trigger back here, and pull that cord out. And so that yellow trigger on the back is what helps to pull it. So there's a spring, you can kind of see it here. This is your spring and all you have to do is squeeze that and you just And it's gonna, it's gonna bring out kind of something like what I have over here. I don't know if I can pull it out. You can. Oh, it's like really in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta yank on it a little bit. Okay. Ah, oh, it's long. Okay. Oh, okay. I got it. <laughs> got it? Great. Okay, so it may look something like this. You see how my filament's kind of weird looking? It has like this weird background. Yeah. So it's, it's gross, right? It's like, eh. so what we need to do for that is we need to cut it. So an angle in order to thread it through easier. So I would take it and like somewhere around here, I would take it and I would cut it at a steep angle like this with my flat shoes. And then we're gonna have a little point that we can now use to thread it through. Okay. Okay. So what we need to do is I wanna move this big arm here. I'm gonna move this up. So I'm gonna teach you one way to do that. And so that's in controls like I told you a little bit about earlier. So we're gonna click on the button again. We're going to go to controls, and then we're going to go to move axis. So we have nozzle, speed, and flow, so that you can change those settings while it's printing, but we just want to move it up. So move axis and move one millimeter. And then move Z. And then you can crank that puppy up to like 20 or 25 or something. You probably don't want it all the way because it's going to take a long time for it to get back down. So if you readjust and you put it like at 20 before it gets too far, usually it won't go all the way up, but it likes to go to the first setting you gave it and then it'll go back down. So, but that's okay. We can leave it. It'll be all right. It's all good. Well, that, it was so easy. It just like went all the way so quickly. <laughs> yeah, the knob's pretty quick. It's easy to spin. And that's what I did. <laughs> Okay, so next what we have is we want to take the filament that we just cut, and so notice that there's little holes on the side of this. Make sure 
if you don't have the filament threaded or anything, that you want to kind of put it in these so that it doesn't unravel. Because you can have okay. it in your filament. There's one. There's like, there's like tiny ones. So next what we're going to do, we're going to take that piece and we're going to squeeze the back trigger like you did earlier. And we're going to feed it back through that hole. Nobody use your foot like this. Oh, we're gonna push it all the way through the tube. Until I can't push it anymore? Right, until it feels like you can't push it anymore. And then you're going to squeeze the trigger and push it a little bit more. <laughs> I think it's going to work. I mean, I don't see it down. And so what's going to happen is you'll notice that if I squeeze and I push a little bit more, if I look at my nozzle now, there should be filament coming out. And so if it hasn't, then maybe try pushing again. It's difficult. And so I have a little piece of knot string, string plastic like this. So did that work for you guys? Oh, shoot. My phone gave out. It popped backwards. Yeah, I can't. So it can be a little bit hard, but you should kind of get a string of filament or a little blob of filament and come back out. I am not seeing blobs. We're at 100 degrees, is that okay? Oh, you need to have it at 220, that's why. Okay, that's okay. Oh. Yeah, you hit preheat soft pull, and that's great if you were to pull it out, and that's why it was so tough earlier. You did an actual soft pull, so you notice how it did come out stringy a lot like mine, because I had done Gotcha. But it helps to remove the clogs and remove all the plastic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you need it at 220 to feed the plastic through and to push out old colors. This is pushing out old colors, right? So this okay. one way to fix it is pushing that filament through. Another way to fix it is doing the soft pull. And then the third method to kind of fix the filament issue is actually taking this little puncture needle that you have inside of your toolkit. So it's tiny like this, and let's see. Okay, yeah. But what you would do with this is you would raise this all the way up like you had earlier and put it up here, and then you would take pliers and heat up the nozzle to 220 degrees, and then you would floss the nozzle with this. Gotcha. And make sure this is like that hardcore one where, you know, if you can't get anything else out, you can't soft pull it out, use this. That's last resort. <laughs> right, yeah. Usually, because what can happen is if you use it too often, you can actually make the nozzle wider than it's supposed to be, and then you'll have a few problems for anyone. Gotcha. A little bit different. All right. All right, so once it's, it's at 220, again, try to okay. yeah, that's good. yeah, now I'm, now we got it. <laughs> now, it's, now it's easy, right? Yeah, now it's still, yeah. Sorry, I'm bad. Okay. No, that's perfectly fine. So what we're going to do now is I want you to unplug it. Unplug it? Unplug it. All right. This is the fail safe of your printer. If you feel like something's going wrong, it's screaming like a dying transformer, or there's plastic going everywhere, unplug it. Okay, this is your fail safe for these guys. And so for anything that may be a problem, you wanna do that. So the reason I unplugged it in this case is because for one, we have filament loaded, two, we have the heated nozzle, and three, it's not empty. So what do you think is going to happen to the plastic that's sitting inside that really hot nozzle? It's going to start coming out still. Right, but sooner or later it's going to get too hot and it's going to bake. Burn? It's turn into a piece of black carbon. And so this yeah. clogs. And so that's why we unplugged it. Gotcha. So let's, unpl let's plug it back in. because We just want to go over that for troubleshooting. And now let's go ahead and hit click the button once. And now... All we have to do is print, because we went through our troubleshooting stuff, right? So we went to Cura was the first one. We Build plate. Hold on, you cut out for a second. You're good. So all we have left to do is print, hit the print button. So we're done, so. Just okay. So you can click on the button, go to print from SD, and then select your robot. And then it's going to say heating. Yes. Okay, and so I'm going to show you the screen real fast. 
So this top value here, 220, that's what it wants to go to. This okay. At. The one below it's what it's at. And then X, Y. Yeah, mine's slowly climbing. It's at like 160 right now. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. And once it hits 220, it's going to go 000 or origin point, And then it's going to start printing. Okay. Sweet. So it sounds like you guys are about to start class. Yes. We just switched classes. Sweet. Well, that sounds perfectly fine because we are finished. And awesome. go ahead and stop the recording.